Hello, this is Alan, and here is a, a graph of the Case-Shiller over the last decade um, adjusted for inflation. And we'll see that um, in the Great Depression, housing fell, but then it, it recovered, and then we've had a few, um, a few booms. And here in this last boom, when you adjust it for inflation and for the falling in price, Case-Shiller is, is making this case that real estate only outperforms the market by about 1% over the last 30, 50 years. And that real estate relative to inflation is falling, it's, it's depreciating, therefore you should invest in other things. And I believe that this is grossly flawed, and, um, and we'll see here the, the reason why. And here I have, um, I have a, just a sample um, graph or a sample, some sample numbers here, where you buy a property with a fixed loan. And let's just suppose you have the property, the house rented for $1,000, and your, um, your expenses are $900 a month, and that leaves you $100 of positive cash flow. Well, if, the, if, the, if you have 8% inflation over a year or two, um, you ha have... Um, and, and with the government printing a lot of money, you know we're going to have a lot of inflation. So this is 8% gain is actually very conservative. It's, um, it's just because right now you have so many loans that are adjusting. We're not experiencing a lot of inflation. But with an 8% gain, the property, the rents will go up to 1080 a month. Let's suppose you have a vacancy and you rent it for 1080 That the market goes up by 8%. Your expenses now... It, your expenses now will not go up by 8%, and that is because you have a fixed loan on residential property. And so, even with the variable loans, most of them have a 5% cap. So you have to you have to check that if you get a variable loan, make sure that it has a 5% cap. If you get a five if you get a 5% loan variable, make sure that it has a 10% variable cap. That's that's. Um, very, very normal with residential properties. And even with income properties, a 5% cap is, is actually very normal. And then so your cash flow will actually go up to $135 a month. That's a 35% gain in cash flow. And this will go on and on. Um, as, as inflation picks up, your gains will, will, will grow. It will seem exponential. But this is the value of leverage. Also here, if you look at your equity gains, it, it, can, be, it can be very, very amazing. Um, here, if you take the value of the property is $100,000, let's suppose you bought it with a $90,000 loan and you, owe, and you have $10,000 of equity. That's what you, you put down payment. So it's worth $100,000. You put $10,000 down and you owe $90,000. Well, in an 8% gain scenario, if the property value goes up 8%, which we know with the government printing 3.3 billion dollars of cash a day, we're going to experience inflation. And it's going to be once the foreclosures are sold off, we're going to experience massive inflation because we learned that lesson from the 70s. In the first half of the 70s, we had the oil embargo. Um, they were printing massive amounts of money in 71. Nixon went off the gold standard. They were printing um, a lot of money relative to the um, to the debt, the, the national debt, and yet we didn't experience inflation until in '75 foreclosures were sold off, and then '76 on we had massive inflation, and so here we see with an eight percent gain the property goes to 108 thousand in value. Well, your mortgage you're paying it down, so over a year or two um, you owe 89. Let's just say you owe 89 thousand just to make it a, an even number here. Well, now your equity has jumped 108,000 minus 89,000 is 19,000. Your equity has jumped 90% in, in just one or two years. And so I just looked back at the property, the two properties that, that I've owned over the last decade. And um, one I bought in 98 and the other one I bought in 2000. And even with the, with the current um, crashes in price and looking at their current appraised value, they have averaged a $6,000 a month equity increase. One has averaged $2,000, it's on, on, on a small lot, and the other one, which is on a double lot, has averaged um, a $4,000 gain per month. And uh, this, is, this is appraisals at the current crashed value in, in uh, 2012. 
And so that's a $6,000 a month gain. So these, these are real numbers. I can sell the property, I can pay the taxes, and I can cash in on this money, or I can also, you know, I can sell the property, do a trade, and um, and these this is real this is real money, real equity buildup. And so what you need to do is you need to think net worth. Don't think about <clears throat> making a, a small gain now. Think that the government is printing inflate printing a lot of money. Once the foreclosures are sold off around the the middle of this decade, around 2015, the second half of this decade. 2016 through 2020, we're going to experience massive appreciation in property. Um, because I follow foreclosures, I, I sold my house in 2007 and I bought back um, at the end of 2011. And in just the last five months, the property that I bought, because the foreclosures in my area have dried up, they've, they've essentially they've almost completely run out, the property value has gone up 20%. And these are real numbers. These are real numbers, and this this is what you need to think about. Think about net worth. Think about leverage. Your cash flow will go up um, with leverage, and also your equity buildup will go up with with leverage. So, um, so just the the case Schiller, just ignore it. Just think about equity buildup and cash flow buildup. Think inflation. Real estate is an inflationary hedge. It's the best place to be in the um, in in this decade.